All right. Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone. Not sure who's here, but if you're here, you can send a text um, and then let me know that we're here. This is live uh, virtual local views at PEM. My name is Acer St. Val. I wish I could see who's there. No one has talked yet, but it's okay. Um, this is very exciting. Perhaps one of my first tour well, in introduction or talking about art and virtual live, virtual. Uh, so here's here's the plan. Um, we'll talk about a few things. Let's see. So I want this to be very, very non-structured. So you could ask questions at any time. And if you want, we don't have to finish this. I have a PowerPoint plan, but we don't really have to go through all of them. It's very um, organic and natural. But first of all, I want to thank um, Denise. Where is Denise? At AV department and um, Andrew Berg. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Anita, thank you so much for inviting me and taking my application. Anita Raham, thank you. And also uh, the PEM education department, which is where Anita is, um, who, who she's with. Um, Franklin, um, the PEM crew, the TAs, the teaching artists, there probably some of them are here. Send me a text, send me, type TA if you're there. That'll be good, just type TA. All right. Um, Eddie, Chan, Charlo, Lori. Hey, Lori. Um, Sandra Vera, Nancy, Cough, uh, Cat Cough. Oh, Trina in Jamaica. <laughs> Is that Katrina, the Duchess in Jamaica? Um, many more. All right. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. I mean, you're not doing anything at home. You're quarantining, but hey, you could have been outside doing something else or sleeping, watching Netflix, enjoying your um, furlough time at home. Um, but you're here, and you want to hear me chat about uh, some of my ideas and art and um, my just my work, it's very, very chaotic. In fact, I start very, very chaotic. I think that's one of my philosophies. Not to have a way to start is um, chaos is very part of what I do. I don't live a chaotic life, but I think my process is very chaotic. We'll talk more about that. Um, so today, we'll, I want to touch upon some past collaborations I've had with um, some amazing artists all over. Um, uh, in Jamaica and Washington, D.C. Shivoni, are you there, Shivoni? Edgar, Edgar. Paloma, Paloma, we collaborated. We'll talk more about you. Hey, Yui. Yui Robel is here. <laughs> That's cool. Hey, by the way, if you have questions, you could ask me anytime. I'll talk about my artistic focus um, a little bit more um, in depth. Um, <clears throat> And um, just type your questions, I'll answer them, I don't mind. I could just go back, I have a PowerPoint too. There is a structure, even though it's kind of chaotic. Um, that's, a, that's the goal. And then I'll definitely talk about nothing because I think a lot of the base of my work is really starting from nothing and to gain something. You'll see why later, uh, let's see. Um, what I believe, my philosophy as a person, as a human being, has a... Um, not so much as an artist, just as a person, how I feel. Um, but it's, it's all one and so on. Okay, so I'm a mixed media um, painter. Um, I use everything in my artwork. I, I don't have a particular, I use pencil, what, whatever, house paint, chalk, dirt, trash. I'm, it's just really very uh, mixed. Um, <clears throat> Let me go back a little bit. And also sculptures. Um, Sometimes I explore that through sculpture. Uh, interactive art installation, which is what I'll deal with a lot today. That would be uh, one of the main focus. And this is a sample of uh, some of my work. This is a 24 by 24. Uh, okay, I think I'm covering this. <clears throat> work on Mesonite. Works mostly on Mesonite. Oh, I don't want to discuss this title. It's kind of um, this is a different world. So. Uh, I'll just skip the title, but uh, <clears throat> all right. So, so let's begin. So very clear. My personal focus as an artist, I deal with um, I've 
I'm interested in exploring neuromelanin. And neuromelanin is basically a chemical in your brain that is secret by your pineal gland. I, there have been so many, so many research and um, information, daily um, consciousness about what the pineal gland is. One of the first um, philosopher and mathematician philo um, scientists who talked about this a lot um, long, long ago was uh, René Descartes. He says that uh, the pineal gland is the principal seat of the soul. So it's perhaps the seat of the soul. So your soul sits on this gland and the, it's the place where all your thoughts are formed. Your creativity, your thoughts, who you are, it formed right there. So we'll figure out a few of them and why this is such a big issue um, and how it's being attacked. I want to talk about that. And also there's this uh, artist, uh, well, not artist, he's a psychiatrist, Dr. Richard King, who's done ex extensive research on the topic. He, um, he coined that the term, he basically says that the neuromelanin, and M short, is the bi biological doorway where your soul leaves your body and enters the physical world or in and out, enters the body, leaves the body go into the spiritual world, and then come into the physical world. And this is um, what he says. All right, what's going on? Lily Parada, hi. How's, how's it going, Lily? Welcome. <clears throat> Do you have a question? Snow is here too. Da, 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 da. Oh, Santiago says, um, soul throne. Oh, thank you very much. Another term for the pineal gland is the soul throne. Kind of like your soul seat, Santiago. Like it's your seat, your throne. All right, thank you for that. I haven't heard that, but that's really good. Um, <clears throat> so um, because of that, I'm interested in the connection neuromelanin have with spirituality. Of course, I already see there's a lot of connection when we think of spirituality, we think of the soul, um, we think of ancient and um, idea of spirituality. I'm not really so much interested in religion. I think it's two different things to be religious and to be spiritual. It's two different things. I'm interested in the connection neuromelanin has with spirituality. And of course, um, how I connect personally, my, to be conscious about this idea, me, uh, my, uh, my pineal, my essence, my spirituality, and uh, what's happening with me consciously in this physical world. <clears throat> so those are really my interests. A lot of my work, that's what I deal with. That's what I strive to research and um, express. And um, I stand by it. And I'm very passionate about it. I'm always reading <laughs> tons of books. One of the books I'm reading right now, it's really crazy. I think I'm almost done. It's good. It's serious. It's called the... Uh shamans healers and medicine men also oh, so he has this really quote before i go into like um before i go into the work i want to read you this quote it's really really powerful he says that the eskimo believe that a, that the eskimo believe that a power a spiritual essence inhabits all stones seas birds plants or objects fabricated by men is one in his book. This is by Holger Karlwitt. I think it's German. Holger Karlwitt. It's an amazing, thick book. I read this all the time, every day. Um, almost, yeah, basically every day. Stephanie says, uh, Lara and Rita, Cara says, hi. Hey, hey, Lara. Man, I haven't seen Lara for ages. Who's from Sakatar? Sending blessing from Sakatar. Michelle Pertman? Ooh, Michelle. Hey, Michelle. <laughs> Michelle, she went with us to um, uh, Guadeloupe. Hi, Michelle. Welcome. <clears throat> okay, so let me continue with the slide. So I think that quote by the, well, it's not a quote. It's really um, research facts from um, Holger Colwitt. Um, so let's move to the next slide. So my work, I use a lot of organic materials to where I mix with traditional materials. So a very, very non-traditional non material with um, traditional materials. For instance, what you're looking at here are vacuum dust on the far left corner. My left, I don't know which one you're seeing. Um, I also use tons of coffee, salt, 
um, even aloe vera, like actual plant, I'll actually squeeze it on a work of art, on a painting and process to see what would happen. And there's a lot of different um, pigmentation and transformation that happens with aloe. Definitely food coloring from the kitchen. I'll buy them and put them in my studio. I don't cook with them, but I use them. They make amazing pot potent colors. Um, <clears throat> let's see. And then eventually the work would start looking like this. I'm looking for a texture that defines something that you can't really uh, um, identify, which is, a, it's very rich. And then they're coated with lots and lots of um, lacquers. Um, a lot of them are uh, uh, gloss medium, thick. And the, a lot of that is to prevent it from animal eating it because you can see that there's salt everywhere and coffee and it's all mixed with the paint. Um, there's a lot of sending that take place to get what I want. Uh, <clears throat> This is a piece, uh, a lot of my work are inspired by people, um, authors, writers, scientists that, uh, that have contributed uh, research into neuromelanin in the beginning. Um, so this piece had been on a travel show um, in, around the US and also Cuba and Santiago. Um, it's, it's Jose Antonio Aponte who was a uh, revolutionary and just that was so, so long ago. Um, it's written by Ada Ferrer. It's Freedom Mirrors. It makes a lot of connection with the influence of Cuba and Haiti, and who was um, Antonio uh, Aponte. As a, he was actually an artist and also a revolutionary who started the ideas and concept of um, revolting against the uh, Spaniard. Okay, great, great, great book. So I titled the piece by. Um, Ada Ferrell's book, her entire book, when it was published, um, where it's published, and the year it was published. So that's the title of the book. Usually that's what I do with uh, the work. I title them, right? Okay. <clears throat> so this is, again, tons of different material. Um, I wish I could get a little closer in the corner here. There's tons of text, different names of God. So I see Jose Antonio Aponte as a God in his own right. <clears throat> Here's another example of the work. Um, now they're taking different um, ideas. So back to that quote, which is where this is, the work is right now, um, where the Exmos would believe that everything would have, everything that, uh, they believe that everything has a power and a spiritual essence. And um, all of these things, what are their inhabits, uh, they all inhabit some sort of spiritual essence, or if, if, if it's made by a man, or if it exists in nature. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So this one is titled Different Concepts. So I'm in the idea of how do I create these objects so that they have spiritual um, powers. So I give them spiritual powers. Bam. <clears throat> oh, I went back to a different work where I'm connecting the essence of um, uh, men and women. I don't believe it's like men and women, the people. It's, I think uh, there's, we are a spiritual being and, and we are balanced on a polarity. So we male, a female, and, um, and then there's a mutual. So kind of like mother, father, mutual child kind of concept. So this piece is inspired by the uh, a male um transforming into an essence of a uh, phoenix essence or the deity of something. <clears throat> then the work start taking place, start taking different forms into a multi-sensory installation where I started thinking about how do I make these artwork alive? How do I make them interactive? And so I began um, working with uh, different um, ideas and collaborations. And, uh, one of the first pieces I've done was um, I went to Santiago uh, with Divikai, uh, with, a div with a grant from Divikai. Divikai, is you there? Rosie, are you there? The Death of Vibe Gallery gave a grant, I think, to four or five artists, and I was fortunate to be uh, one of them. And you actually will go to a different part of the world and do a residency for a month. And uh, I chose Santiago to Cuba, so I went there for a month, and I collaborated with artists in Santiago. And um, also, there's uh, two organizations that were a part of this. Rosie, uh, the Divikai sponsored with a grant. We had supporters like Lobe Art and Travel. Is Lobe there? Uh, if you're there, send me a text. Wam. 
Okay, maybe he's not there. Um, <clears throat> Lobe Art and Travel um, support the project. Um, Casa Caribe were the um, organization that invited me to come in and, and work under the umbrella. Uh, and then we had another, there was another organization, Tai Cultural, who, where I physically work in the studio. So that was really, really cool. And then tons of artists, tons of artists. They all were very helpful. I collaborated with a dancer, this dancer here. Um, she came from another crew with an artist named Titi. So I had like tons of dancers, photographed them. And uh, there was another artist named um, Denise, actually, who uh, in Cuba, who, was, who created the mask. Yeah. So this really a, a multi-sensory, it involves sound, um, audio, binaural recording, aromas, and um, she's feeding them and they're in a state of sleep. And Okay, let's move on. It's a lot. Actually, we're not gonna play that. That was me dancing, but it's gonna be like, uh, uh, okay. I should have sent it to like um, Andrew. Um, oh, that, was one, that was one of the reasons I went to, I chose Santiago de Cuba because I love dancing salsa, so but we're not gonna see this video. We could go dance after the quarantine. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is another piece where the artwork the work started transforming into um, installations, different um, a format of installation. This is a, this piece is about uh, 15 feet high on the ceiling. It's helium inside that holds it up. Um, and then there's uh, just underwears all over around on the seat on that. <clears throat> It's cool. Questions? No? Who's that? Santiago, the first. She say, how does uh, uh, new melanin relate to health or new health? Or is it, um, depend is it dependent on age, gender? Oh, okay. All right. Um, good question. She say, how does new melanin relate to health? Okay. First of all, health. Everything you put, you, the neuromelanin is actually a semiconductor. It's actually, abs, it's an absorbent substance. So food is energy, it's energy. So the food you put inside your body, your melanin absorbs it and stays there. Your neuromelanin, brain melanin, your pineal gland, like everything you feed your body. So in terms of health, if you're eating certain things uh, that are chemical, your, your, neuro, your pineal gland would absorb it um, faster. Oh, and it stays there because it's, uh, it, it, it holds it for a longer time. Cool. Um, oh, the first word was like health and new health. Um, new health would you probably mean like um, um, psychiatry health or is that what you mean? Psychological health or health? Is it dependent on age? I think it depends on age because a child is very, very, very um, creative and strong. And then when you live in this world for such a long time, you become conditioned. Cool? So I think it does depend on age in terms of uh, health, unless it's, unless it's genetic or it's, it's something you catch from your, it's derivative from your parents or something, okay? Okay, so we have another question. Rita Carr asks, um, have you always worked with uh, these materials? Nimin uh, Simon, um, how long it takes you to do a piece? Oh, um, how long? I'll answer that one. This one is the easy one. How long does it take to do a piece? Um, depends on the size. Um, I think the usual side will take a month. Uh, something really, really um, small. Uh, like, let's see. Yeah, something like this would take a month because it has to dry. Uh, something like this would take um, less than a month. This is about 24 inches. Uh, this, I went back to it several times. So um, this, um, probably more than a month. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Oh, the, the other question was, uh, da, 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 da. Rita asks, um, have you always worked with these materials? No, not really. I have not always worked with this material. I started working with uh, these organic materials, uh, started in 2000, um, 2004. I started exploring the essence of neuromelanin, rather, rather of neuromelanin, the chemical, 
and the skin and the uh, uh, the palate. Um, I was doing very um, uh, nude women that have very glowy skins. Actually, if you look here, I'll show you something to answer that question right here. If you see these legs right here in this painting, so all the figures, this is a figure from work and this is all paint, uh, painting. Um, it's still mixed media. So that's what I did before. So if you cut half and look on top, this is an evolution from between 19, uh, uh, 2004. And then before 2004, it was all these figures. Okay. Um, Franklin Sermons. Hey, Franklin, how's it going? Thanks for tuning. Um, it says, do you know, uh, do you now go seemingly between painting, sculpture, and performance works that are uh, presented as uh, videos? Yes, yes. Um, it's, it's all, all comes together right now because right now I'm interested in, um, in uh, an experience um, that is central, um, that is uh, based on the sense so that anyone can respond to it and also that it's uh, very uh, intuitive in terms of understanding it or it's only based on your level of consciousness. So um, in and out. Uh, but of course I collaborate with artists a lot of artists, so a lot of these videos, uh, or I just find um, great artists, like we'll talk later. So um, let's talk about some most recent work. Most, most, most recent work I did was with, uh, Franklin, that would answer some of your question. It's called Binduum. Binduum is a word I created with uh, the word Bindu, which is another name for the pineal gland. Um, so, um, I take Bindu and the concept of taking something and giving it power that it has a, a spiritual essence and that, um, that habits in it. So I'm now creating, um, uh, words using the essence pineal and giving them new entities, so basically creating entities. So this one is called Bindu is an installation I did in collaboration with, uh, it's going to be multi-sensory in collaboration with, um, it was, this was an art serve. Um, this is Paolo. Hey, Paolo, are you there? I knew you were there. This is Paolo. Paolo is an amazing um, sound healer artist. And she's multidisciplinary. She's a musician. She's a um, painter. She owns two stores. Now she's selling, doing amazing with um, creating masks. She collaborates with another artist where they're selling masks all over the world, <laughs> all over the U.S. And she has a... Uh, um, organization called Om Session, where she uses um, sound to um, balance your chakra, or basically to heal you using sound and crystal ball. These are pieces she has in her hands, so she created this sound. So I've known Paolo forever. She's amazing. So I knew um, at one point we would create, we we'll, would we'll collaborate together. Um, so, and this opportunity came, and also Loti is uh, from the Netherlands. I met her kind of through Paolo and Waxana, they're all friends, and I was looking for a performer, a dancer. I had a month to plan this, so it had to happen, and Loti is here in Miami. I hope, Loti, are you, did you tune in? Loti, she's an amazing dancer. And so I told her about the project. She was like, yeah, this is amazing. Let's do it. So we planned, and she was great, and it worked out. Um, and you, so I'm gonna need you to play, um, this video really quick for the audience. And this happens um, beginning this year. So we're gonna leave out for a minute and Drew is going to play a quick video with uh, Loti and Paloma and I. My most recent okay. work is titled Binduum. It is a multi-sensory interactive installation in collaboration with Paloma Duenes a musician and founder of Om Sessions and performance artist Liz Loti Pitlow. The installation consists of an air sculpture, queen size bed, by now recording headphones, sound, music, aromas, food, and performance. To emerge in the work, audiences rest on the bed, which is being pulled by an ambiguous sculpture at the headboard. 
While on the bed, participants wear a pair of binaural headphones or 3D sound headphones, playing a non-linear conversation in four languages. Meanwhile, the ohms of crystal bowls float through the space and a blend of 13 different aromatic oils fill the bed. Finally, a harpy, a half bird, a half female drifts and dance in the space and feeds the audience soft black licorice as they curiously approach the installation. I'm interested in spirituality, identity, and self-consciousness in relationship to neuromelanin. I explore these ideas in paintings, sculptures, and art installations. My fascination with neuromelanin underscores a desire to detect the hidden side of the substance. Melanin is a chemical secreted by the pineal gland, uh, a part of the brain, which plays a significant role in human spirituality. My works are sometimes quasi-figurative, ambiguous, and they bring together ideas central to modern debates concerning neuromelanin. <laughs> I wonder what they say. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. My environments are surreal, a surreal fantasia on themes such as underrecognized African American inventors, the politics of sexual desire, and the complex aesthetics, narratives, and metaphors that attach to the organic substance. Bindu seed is considered the point at which all our thoughts and creativities are formed. The life force of the universe, the seed of creation, or the cosmic egg. It is described as the sacred symbol of the universe and its unmanifested state. Metaphysically, Bindu or Bindu seed is a reference to our primordial self, our soul, the soul. I added, I am to Bindu, composing a new word, Bindum, or Binduam, Binduam. By doing so, I am acknowledging, claiming, and becoming the Bindu in meditation and visualization. The intention of the work is to create a surreal environment or space that engages the senses and the mind to tap into the deepest parts of the subconscious. Okay. Keep, um, keep me with time, okay? Be Let me know. Okay. Okay, hope you enjoy this. Um, so, yeah, yeah, it was just months ago. I think this quarantine, this whole situation, makes it feel like a year ago, right? <laughs> this was just months ago. It was fun. Um, it would have been great to hear some of the experiences my collaborators had. So I want to thank you, Paolo. Um, I'm sure we'll do some work again <laughs> in the future. Um, Low T, I hope you're there. Thank you. Um, okay, let's move to a next collaboration that I did. And this is this collaboration um, I did in, um, in Washington, D.C. at the Cochrane School of Art and, Des and Design, uh, George Washington University. Uh, this is a, a 20 feet polyethylene L sculpture again. 
um, banal headphone, recording headphones, um, black licorice aroma. And if you look in the far right corner, that's Rosie. This was amazing. I had the entire um, Rotonda room to create this installation. Um, I've incorporated a new, uh, a different, actually it's not new because Paula did the sound. Uh, this is Rosie right there. And Edgar, this is Edgar with the hat. He is the videographer that I've collaborated with and hopefully Edgar's here. Let's see. Um, okay, this was the, in, um, the intersectionality that uh, Diaspora Vibe took a few artists from all over the intersectionality, like all types of Caribbean, whether they live in Miami and the US and Jamaica. And um, this show was amazing. And um, that was just November, not 2019, um, 2019. And it was called Diaspora Art from the Creole City. Um, so in collaboration, I want to uh, thank Liz Rosie. Was is, is Rosie there? She hasn't said anything. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's move on. Let's talk about my collaborators because I'm very, without them, this would not have been what it is. <clears throat> so this is Patty. Patty is a Miami based artist. She has um, a line called Tiny, Tiny Fucking Picks. And what she does, she draws this very fine little detail the size of your thumb drawing. And I've known, Patty, Patty's also one of my salsa, salsa dancers. She's amazing. She's been dancing for a long time. Um, <clears throat> artists and salsa, best. So she transferred them into pillowcases. Um, we were trying to do like a whole sheet, but it didn't happen. But we've managed with the pillowcases. So all these pillows are designed by Patty. And what on them are people and intimate relationship um, making out on the pillows that most people don't notice is very, very interesting. <clears throat> this is Shivoni in Washington, D.C. She's a, oh, she happened to be a Salseda too. Um, I've seen her dancing. Um, it just, she happened to be, I was looking for a dancer and a performer in D.C. <clears throat> and um, I was connected with her by Where's Golda? Is she here? Claudia Magallanes. She said, hey, I have a friend in D.C. He might know somebody. And then he connected me with his friend in D.C. And then we called this. They know the prophet girl. So this was Shivoni. And Shivoni, we, we spent a month on the phone planning it. She was so enthusiastic. And it's like she had the same ideas. And it worked very well. This is the Daimia Williams in Jamaica. Um, I met Daimia in Jamaica when I did um, another residency, well, not a residency, a cultural exchange, went to Jamaica and did um, artist development with the Diaspora Vibe Cultural Art Incubator. And she uh, also, um, I've collaborated with her in Jamaica. So she designed this mask. Okay. She designed this mask right here. And this is the mask that uh, Shivoni would wear for the performance. Um, this is uh, Michael Elliott. Michael, are you there? I think Michael, he said he would come. Hi, Adrian. Is he there? Okay. This is Michael Elliott, He's the amazing painter in Jamaica. Um, and he painted um, Shivoni. Um, well, it, Put together, but he did a lot of the painting and he's paint worked with me before. Patty Sua, hey Patty, um, did you just get here, Patty? No, Michael is here. Hey Michael, thanks a lot. This was amazing. This wouldn't have been what it is without Michael. And then you'll see the body work, the uh, paint that Michael did. That was amazing. Um, <clears throat> this is Edgar Romero. Edgar Romero was the videographer. And the plan with Edgar Romero was to, for Edgar, Edgar to, um, document the experience the people were having and then put that experience on an iPod and leave it on the, on the bed so that after the performance is over, um, the show would stay for four months at the Cochrane and people could relieve the performance. So they're having an out-of-body experience. They're seeing what's happening in the space through um, iPod, but it's not happening um, at uh, live not happening live and so that was the idea um, and he finished it this was amazing um, 
everyone who see this video, uh, they're just like, wow, it's just breathtaking. Thank you, um, Edgar. Edgar, are you there? Edgar, amazing work. He has a, organiza um, a film company. Thank you. All right, so we will see his work. Oh, this element in the artwork came before, uh, at the last minute. This is something that Shivoni suggested, and I thought, oh, I'm not sure how we're going to do this. Sound, I'm not sure. This is not about sound. We have an audio. Um, it's not about sound, but perhaps it can work. We have to make it work within the installation. And then I say, if it's going to be sound, I need the strangers. Um, it has to be live instrument. And he needs to be anonymous. And I did an instrument people wouldn't normally see. And ironically, the basses is one of the instruments you don't see often. They do exist in jazz quartets, but you don't see them often. So we, I say, if you could find me a basis, we on. We're going to do this with a basis. But however, he needs to be OK with being dressed up. Anonymous, he will be anonymous. And then I want 418 on a lampshade. And then I spoke to um, Mr. B, and then he said, yeah. Um, so I'm like the light of the room. I'm like, uh, yeah, I never thought of that. But yeah, you're going to be the light of the installation. And then he was amazing. He was so cool. Um, this is him on the side from DC. Uh, so um, let me see. What else could I say before we play this? Michael, uh, Michael Lee, love this. Uh, wondering about your thoughts of uh, sensory path to a higher con a higher uh, consciousness versus shutting off the senses. Um, different spiritual tradition seems to have different ideas on this. Uh, wondering, but uh, wondering about yours. Um, I think Paloma will be interesting to like talk about this. Um, Paloma does sound um, healing through um, through uh, crystal ball. And we have um, talked about. Okay, so Michael Lee, let me let me think about that. So we want to play this video, and then I'll think about your questions while uh, we see this amazing documentation by Edgar Romero, um, Shivoni, um, and the collaborator. Shivoni was the main um, character for this part because we was document the uh, um, performance. So um, let's please play um, Andrew Andrew Bird. Sarah St. Vaughan's work explores spirituality, identity, and self-consciousness as it relates to neuromelanin. His fascination with neuromelanin underscores a desire to understand the unknown potential of this dark pigment found in the brain, which is structurally related to melanin. Neuromelanin, secreted by the pineal gland, is an organ related deep in the center of the brain, playing a significant role in human spirituality. The pineal gland is the principal seat of the soul and the place from which all our thoughts are formed. French philosopher René Descartes. Saint Val's works are dreamlike and ambiguous, infusing ideas central to modern debates about neuromelanin into interactive art installations. He addresses themes such as underrecognized African American inventors, the politics of sexual desire, the complex aesthetics, narratives, and metaphors that attach to various organic substances. St. Vaughan's most recent work, The Philosopher's Stone, is a multi sensory interactive installation in collaboration with Patti Sau, Michael Elliott, Edgar Romero, Dahemia Williams, and Shivani Gaius. The intention of this installation is to activate the audience's imagination through a surreal experience engaging all the senses. He wants participants to tap into a hidden side of their subconscious mind in order to activate their essence through resting, meditation, and imagination. All the senses are engaged as they listen to streams of consciousness in four languages, smell 13 aromas, feel the soft textiles, gaze upon original paintings shimmering in the space, all while tasting black licorice from the winged hands of a rising phoenix. The 
Philosopher's Stone is an ancient myth, often described as a magical stone or elixir impossible to find. Metaphysically, the concept is a reference to the search for one's soul. The impact the work has had on viewers has been described as an experience of magical transformation. He believes the spiritual nature of neuromelanin and its abilities to connect us to our higher self is a universal curiosity that binds us as human beings. Embodying the rising phoenix gifted me the opportunity to return to myself, to return to my divinity, to embrace and reconnect to my femininity. Shivani Gaius, performance artist. Uh -huh. Two. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. We're going to wrap it up. I'll leave a few minutes for a question. Um, there are some, this is a really, really um, interesting question. Michael Lee asked, and just to answer it very, very quickly, Michael Lee, I don't think there are no any right way to the path of consciousness, whether you are, um, whether you shutting it, shutting off your senses at one point, or you are using um, higher stimuli, or more and more and more. I think at certain stage in your life, you would need to do one or the other. So I don't think so. Other um, spiritual spiritual uh, traditions do what works for them. So any more questions? I'm so thankful. Um, this was great, Anita and Andrew, um, Denise, um, Pam, uh, Marie. Everyone, um, education uh, department, uh, Rosie, who have been the um, from the beginning, have always believed in this work uh, that I do. Um, thanks, thank you for tuning in. More questions? That's it. All right. Thank you for coming. Goodbye. Enjoy. Um, let's chat. Stay in touch. Um, be safe. Whatever it takes. Okay. If you need to go play in the dirt outside in your backyard, go play in the dirt. It's good for you. <laughs> it strengthens your immune system. You could ask the kids about that. You could ask them. All right. Bye bye. Thank you.